Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, this is Jen and Christian's with me and we've got another friend of ours picking our movie for this week. So if you want to hear our friend the horror miser Monty G suggestion. Hello Jennifer, hello Christian. If you're wondering what happened to Monty G, I have possessed his body for I am the ghost of the miser. <laughs> I have taken over his body because some of my gold is missing. You see, I allowed Monty G access to my gold for his movie reviews. But he is the only one allowed to use it. I have sensed that you might have some of my gold. I was coming to haunt you, but the horror miser Monty G said that he can come up with a compromise. So, if you're willing to do these videos for your 31 days of horror, perhaps I will forgive you and not haunt you. <laughs> I was told from Monty G that you, Christian, love creature feature movies. You're lucky that I enjoy those as well. And I have two movies I would like to see you reveal for your 31 days of Halloween. One is called Deep Rising, yes. That's a movie that was directed by Stephen Sommers. Yes, the guy that did the Mummies series. And no, not the one that starred Tom Cruise. <laughs> There's another one that I would like to see you guys review, and that's called The Relic. Yes, that's the one that sounds Tom, ooh, stars Tom Sizemore. It is a great creature feature movie. So, if you were to review either one or both of those movies during your 31 days of horror, I will no longer you will no longer be on my list of people to haunt. <laughs> I will be watching Jennifer and Christian to see if you will review these movies for the 31 days of horror. Because if you don't, you will see a visit from the ghost of the miser. <laughs> oh, by the way, happy Halloween. <laughs> I now return the body of the horror writer's Bunny G back to his original state. I will see you later, but you better hope I don't. <laughs> okay, sure, I like the relic just fine. <laughs> Yeah, The Relic is kind of a forgotten one of the 90s. And you know what? Christian brought up a good point when we were watching this. You know, the 90s had a hell of a lot more creature features than I remembered. I started thinking about it, and yeah, it really like, does. Yeah, a lot of people would say, like, after Jurassic Park, I would go further and say kind of starting in the late 80s, like Deep Star 6 and stuff like that. Like, you get Leviathan, this, a Congo, Bats, Anaconda. Anaconda. The list goes on. Mimic. There was a lot. Big-ass giant spiders. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Lot, there were a lot that was early 2000s but yeah no yeah. there's a lot of real that, the 90s had kind of a big resurgence of creature features arachnophobia and, yeah arachnophobia is another case of them and this was and this was one of the more high profile ones yes it was kind of supposed to be a more sophisticated i think that's what the director called this and the director we're going to talk about in a minute but i think the director called this a much more sophisticated horror movie yeah yeah and it could have been a very cheapish aliens knockoff but it really wasn't it was its own thing um, and then I guess we should we talk about the director? Or should we talk about the big thing about that? If anyone remembers this movie, it's the lighting. Okay, let's talk about how this is one of the darkest movies ever made. Mm. No, no, not in tone, silly. This movie is pretty campy and cheesy in the best way possible. No, this movie was in, intentionally lit, uh, lit to be really pitch black dark. Yeah. To, to give a vibe across. The problem is that worked great in theaters. 
It on did. home video, DVD and VHS mainly, uh, no, you couldn't hardly see anything. I have a copy, I had a copy of The Relic, and uh, for certain scenes, it was literally just almost pitch black on the screen. Yeah. Which was, led to a lot of, which led to issues. I believe the Laserdisc was okay, and I think the Blu-ray now, um, cleaned it up a lot too. So it's a little bit better lit now, but yeah, for a long time, this was one of those movies that... You couldn't see what the hell was going yeah, on. Yeah, there were a lot of things you couldn't see what the hell was going on, which is a shame, because the actual effects, it's Winston, Sam Winston's studio who, did, who designed the creature, and it looks really great. Yeah, it really does look great. The problem is you can't see it for much. And I remember, if you, there, I know there's a lot of uh, 90s, uh, you know, they weren't exactly, you were probably teenagers like I was, and I remember having the VHS copy, and I didn't particularly care. I think I've only seen it, this is the second time, mm. and I don't, didn't want to go back to it because you really can't see it. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those movies where, you, which is, and I like the actors in this yeah, movie. Yeah, Tom Sizemore is really good in and it. And so is Penelope Ann Miller. Yeah, she's pretty good in it, too. Yeah, yeah you have good. some You have some terrific character actors in it, too. It, it has a really good cast, actually. No big names, but it has a good cast. It does, and they all do their roles very well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but uh, the director, um, this was his first horror movie. I believe he's done others. But this He did was, End of Days with Arnold Schwarzenegger. But that was count, after. Yeah, if you count that as a horror movie. But uh, this was his first, and he also did, and I didn't know this, he did Running Scared. And Time Cop and Sudden Death with Van Damme. Yeah, and uh, Running Scared was Billy Crystal and Gregory Hines. Yeah. Had a great soundtrack yeah. by uh, Michael McDonald. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have the theme song on my iPod, but that's neither here nor there. But I did not know the same guy that did this did the uh, did Running Scared and some of yeah. these others. It's kind of, I can understand the end of days. Now that yeah. kind of has the same feel, but the others are more straight up action movies. And for his first horror movie, it did pretty good. Yeah, it did pretty solid. The, re the Relic is the definition of a not outstanding, amazing film, but, but it's fun. still really solid and has some really cool moments in it and some surprisingly satisfying kills because it was the late 90s. You could still have actual gory kills in a movie. Yeah, it was rated R and he it wasn't like nowadays where people lose their minds over the Joker and Rambo, which I still don't understand. Mm -hmm, yeah. But yeah, I, yeah it, it was a different time. You could have a fun creature feature where somebody gets to where, where the main way or monster kills people is by decapitating them. Yay! And you see them get decapitated almost every time. And it's glorious almost every time. Yes, it is. I know for one of the decapitations they made a full body mask of the actor and then they ripped it in half. And I think for the other one, they, they, they cut him in half but just used green screen. Yeah, they chroma keyed him out. Yeah. yeah Which it, I actually didn't know. I couldn't tell. Like I was I was doing some tri looking for some trivia on the movie and I actually couldn't. It's so well chroma keyed. I couldn't tell that they did that. I legitimately figured they just made a replica of the dude and just his torso or something. Mm -hmm. But they did it, and yeah. it's really, really good. Um, do you, uh, would you say this is a sophisticated horror movie? I'd say it's... <sighs> Okay, it was the no, it was the late '90s, so for what for what it was, it is smarter than a lot of other it is. creature it features that. of the time. Like I love stuff like bats or anaconda or so Leviathan, um, but this is probably one of the more highbrow movies of them. That being said, this is still a cheesy creature feature meant to be fa have fun. So it's not like an art house or, or, you know, film trying to say more about life. It's just supposed to be a fun creature feature. Yeah, I would classify this as in a a little bit highbrow, but it's still a popcorn flick. Yeah, it's a good one. It, and like I said, I've heard that the Blu-ray has cleaned it up quite a bit. So this might be another one people might want to, especially us 90s kids, might want to come back and see maybe it's a little better than you remember. Because to be perfectly honest, when Monty suggested this, I was like, I didn't care for that movie. But seeing it a second time around, I, it's not ever going to be one of my favorites, but it's better than I remember. And that's rare. Usually yeah. when you go back to a movie, it's the other way yeah, around. Yeah, especially like from this period, like you go back and watch some of the some of the movies you remember really liking when you were a teenager, especially from like this or the 80s and stuff, and like, oh wow, this doesn't hold up at all. Now sometimes they do, and but then you gotta acknowledge that some of it is clouded with nostalgia, yeah, yeah. but it's very rare to find a movie that you didn't particularly care for, and then it's been 20, well, <laughs> whatever year. It's been a long time since you've seen it, and then you go back to it after Holy shit, The Relic's 20 years old. 
shut up. A little over. Um, uh, that that you go back after a very long period and you're surprised, you're pleasantly surprised by how good it is. It's usually the other way around, and I will give it that. Um, uh, yeah, and the creature effects are really good. The acting's really good. It's nothing highbrow, like Christian said. Do you have any major cons? Okay, I will say this movie is a little too long. Yeah. Like it, it, there, it, nothing really happened. Like a couple kills and some atmosphere stuff and some build up ha setup happen, but and we don't actually get into the like real fun part of the movie when the like uh, ball starts until over an hour into the movie. So it's weird to say a creature feature is kind of a slow, uh, kind of more slow paced, which is interesting, but for a creature feature, eh, speed it up a bit. Yeah, you could have cut a little bit of the stuff out of it. Some of it's still real good, and the and once we get to the actual like big, uh, big, uh, big unveiling of the creature, for, and then on the movie is excellent with that. Yeah, but for a creature feature, it is a bit of a slow burn. I know you mentioned this when we were watching it. You also really had a problem with the two kids. Oh god, yeah, like they're, they, I, I, it'd been ages since I saw this and I couldn't, I didn't remember those kids, so I didn't remember if they were like a part of the main cast or anything. They're just in the one scenes of, the, they're bad kid actors. They're, they're really... They're not terrible. They're oh come not. on, those kids are a little, only a little bit younger than you now. They can take it. Your acting was shit, kids. I, I wouldn't say that. That's, uh, no, I, they, they were fine for what they were. They weren't knockout ones, but they were Fine. They, they were bad actors. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it, but luckily they aren't in the movie. But for just like one or two uh, scenes, so that's good. Yeah, I I, I do like uh, I do like this movie better than I remembered. I liked it. I don't have any major cons except yeah, it is a little bit long in the tooth. But I like that it's kind of cheesy fun. I mean, we start out in the jungle with this one dude, and he's he gets killed. Pretty cool. It's a cool death scene. That's one thing I always fucking I always mix these movies up. I thought that The Relic was the movie that opened with Bruce Campbell in the jungle and Congo was the one that had this opening. No. It's yeah, the, I, I know. Movie. Until I watched Congo for whatever reason, relatively recently, and realized, what? oh, sh I don't know. It was on and I was bored. Um, it's uh, just your Tim Curry fanboy. Yeah, and then I was like, wait, that's Bruce Campbell. Oh, this is the movie. Wait, what was that movie I was thinking of? And then, then I was like, oh, that's the movie I was thinking this scene from. Cool. You crisscross. Yeah, but yeah, no, I always got those confused. I get that. It, well, they kind of do have a not exactly, but they're both from the '90s. They both. Have, this is a way better movie than Congo. Even with Tim Curry. Yeah, Congo. And Bruce a, Campbell. Yeah, and Bruce Campbell and Ernie Hudson. No, uh, Congo is a piece of shit. Congo for me is kind of cheesy fun. It's not like. We need to do a video on Congo someday. But yeah, but this one, this one is a little bit more sophisticated, but not so highbrow that it'll bore you. It, the length, the length is my only real con. It's pretty much by the number. Numbers. He gets killed, but they ship the wrong contents to this museum, and the the creature uh, comes out to play in the mm -hmm. museum, and uh, during a soiree, a soiree, because of course it is. Because of course. Yeah, and uh, the, Penelope Ann Miller uh, plays a scientist, and she is intrigued by this, and they get one box that's just full of leaves, but she sees this thing growing. Everyone's saying it's fungus, and she's not quite sure, and she has to find out because. Because science. Because science. It yeah. really, if you look at it too hard, and they they do. Okay, there is enough. It's not exactly a con, but it, it it was a little ridiculous. Some of the dialogue when they're trying to sound like super smart scientists. Oh. Well, is that's the case. Little... Of, that's the case of any creature feature. May I remind you some of the shit they say in bats? I guess, but this one just it just knocked me for a little. And it's not necessarily a con. It's kind of makes you smile, and it's a great big helping of cheese. But you know, the one that threw me for a loop, and this isn't much of a spoiler. I don't even think the character has any lines but the mayor in this movie has a wife and she gets ho and she gets fucking killed uh, killed in the movie and by the end of it he's, he's just talking and he doesn't even seem like it even phased him that his wife got decapitated in front of his eyes i get maybe unhappy marriage but still it's a little it was a little weird a uh, political marriage i guess so but it just kind of threw me for a loop like dude your wife just got decapitated in front of you i also have one more big uh plus in for this movie I, and I rem this is pretty much the only thing I remembered oh, about the Relic when we were going into it, because I, it's been years. I mean, I saw this back in the 90s, and I don't think I've ever returned to it until we were doing this review. And the one thing I did remember is our other big lead, who is a cop, 
um, everyone in his precinct is teasing him because uh, he got a divorce. In fact, that's when he comes into when his one of his first scenes is uh, they're going, oh, did did she get custody? His ex-wife, and you know, you automatically think it's a kid. No, it was over his dog. Yeah, yeah, that's how we got introduced to Dom Size more. And it's just a it's it's a little tiny subplot, but I is a dog is weird. He has this weird little character quirk, uh, quirk where he's superstitious about every single thing. But that's kind of another trope of yeah, you know, yeah. I was gonna say I'm fine with it, but it's just kind of a weird little character quirk that he gave that they gave him. Gives it more three dimensional. I know this character. is based off a book. I don't know how much of this is in the book or not. And I think the book has a sequel or two. So. I've heard the book is better. This is one where I have not read the book. I need to add it to the list. But I've heard the book is better. Not that this movie's bad or anything, but for people who have read the book, they say it's a little bit better. Okay, yeah. And I, I guess this is one kind of thing where it would probably work better in your imagination on pages as opposed to on the big screen. Sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. You get lost in translation. So, but for what it is, it's pretty good. So I guess if you're looking for another movie to throw on your Halloween binge, this one wouldn't be bad, especially if it's been like me and it, you, it's been a, quite a while since you've seen it, or if you've never okay. seen it, might want to give it another chance. Yeah. Do you have any more things to say about The Relic? Not really. Relic's really so solid. Yeah, it's a solid movie. Not one of my favorites, but it's decent on a rewatch. And like I said, if you grew up watching it on a VHS copy, you know, you, you pick up the Blu-ray. You could probably find it in a $5 bin at Walmart. Yeah, probably. I, I, what would you give this for a lot of grading? Oh. I give this like a B plus. It's really, it's so, it's so, really solid. Nothing extraordinary. It's probably not my favorite creature feature of the 90s, but it's a fun one. It's better than like Congo or even Leviathan from what I I remember doesn't hold up all that well. Yeah, um, B minus because, like I said, I wasn't really particularly looking forward to doing rewatching this uh, movie, and gotta admit, it was a lot better than I remembered it to be. But it's still not one that I'm completely in love with. But I think a lot of people will be like me if it's been quite a few years and you watched it on a VHS. Give it another shot, yeah. and definitely, and look up the book because, like I said, I've heard the book is way better. So, yeah, there you go. But I'd give this a B minus. I'd say check it out. Don't break your neck. But if you're looking for something and if you've got a little bit of 90s nostalgia, definitely give this one another Absolutely. watch. Yeah, so thank you, Bonnie. Oh, I mean, Ghost of the Miser. You scare us. Is Monty coming back anytime soon? But thank you, guys. Whoever picked it, I don't know if it was the ghost or Monty, but whichever one of you guys picked it, Thank you very much because we really appreciate it. You picked an awesome movie and you made me discover a movie I like better than I remembered. So that's always a plus. So thank you very much, Ghost or Monty. I don't know which one.